Welcome and thank you for joining me today to pray, to open our hearts to God, to use our lips to praise him, to thank him, to seek his wisdom from his word. Uh, We're going to read Psalm 32 today and Luke's Gospel chapter 12 verses 13 to 21. In the psalm we find blessing, the blessing of being open and transparent before God, of acknowledging what we've done wrong in his eyes by his standards. And so let me pray and then we're going to turn also to Luke 12 where we find Jesus teaching us on a right attitude of heart towards money, especially if that money is something that's Um, become more abundant in recent months um, as as people have found um, that income continues to come in uh, through pay packets or furloughed payments from the government or through um, pensions, whatever it might be, as a source of income with nothing to spend that money on. That money might be piling up and the parable that Jesus teaches gives us a right attitude towards that money in our heart. So let's pray, and then we'll read God's word. Lord, we thank you for the start of this day, or this day that we've had. We thank you for the life that you give us, for the opportunities to experience this world and to know you in this world to grow in that knowledge, to grow in that experience of your love and your and your generosity towards us in all sorts of ways. We pray as we read your word now that you would help us to know you and that right attitude of heart that you call us to, to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Well, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, But the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. You don't notice what made this man groan all day long. He kept silent. He tried to cover his transgressions, his iniquities, his sins, his wrongdoing. How much like him can we be? We put on a kind of public face of goodness and yet groan at what we've done wrong. On the inside, there's that groaning all day long. Um, We can be those who try and explain why we did something or justify it by saying, I did it because, or um, simply kind of harden our hearts and say, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Uh, and and hide it on the inside. We can look good on the outside, but on the inside, that conscience and that that sense of why did I do that? Why did I 
transgress that way? Why did I sin? Why did I do wrong? Is eating us up on the inside. And that's why this psalm is such a help to us to be open with God, to be transparent with God. It's not that God doesn't already know. He, he knows everything about us. It's not that we can surprise him or shock him by how bad we've been or how wrong we've behaved or, or, or whatever we've, we've done. Just be open with God. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, verse 5, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And there's where the blessing comes from, isn't it? Verse 1, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. God will counsel us. God will guide us in the way we should go. He, he cautions us not to be like stubborn mules or, or, or unbroken horses who won't do what they're told. He says, no, don't be like that. Simply acknowledge that there are woes of the wicked. How many of us, all of us, know that there's an ongoing battle on the inside, but also with our lives on the outside when wickedness prevails. So we can rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, sing with all the, all the right upright in heart, because the Lord forgives those who confess their sins, restores that relationship. And if you're someone today who thinks, God could never forgive me, he, my, my, my sins have been too great, what I did was, was too dreadful, then remember this, or ask yourself this question, do you think there is any sin so great that Jesus didn't or couldn't pay for it? On the cross. If you think your sin is too great for God to forgive, it means you think too little of what Jesus did for you and who he is. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we acknowledge today that you are the Son of God, the Son of of the Most High, that you are the anointed of the Lord, that you are eternal in the heavens, that you were there with the Father from the beginning, that you created the world and that you died for our sins. And Lord, we thank you that in light of who you are and in light of the cross, we can come before you acknowledging that there is no sin so great that your death cannot cover us. And so we praise you with the words of this psalm, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is he whose iniquity has been removed. We praise you, Lord, today that you are the God who satisfies justice in Christ and forgives sins to all who confess to you, to restore that relationship, to cleanse a guilty conscience. We pray today, Lord, we'd experience, experience cleansing. Lord, be, let us be like a child who's come in from the rugby field, the football pitch, covered in mud. Confess our sins and be cleansed, Lord, like having a bath and our, and our clothes put through the washing machine that we might be clean once more. We pray we'd experience that today, the blessing of the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And so to Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to, 30, uh, to 21, where Jesus teaches us to have a right attitude towards money in our hearts. Here we go. Verse 13, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. Then he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich towards God. What a, what a challenge. We, we know the phrase, um, you can't take anything with you. Or, I came into this world naked, I go out naked. All those sorts of sayings. And, and, and Jesus effectively says the same things. Why build bigger barns? Why store up more grain? Why, not, why put things away that you might hope for a happier, freer, merrier, more drunken, more entertaining life in the years to come? Because tomorrow your life could be taken from you. What is the point in storing it up? Guard your heart against greed. In today's today's situation, you may be somebody who's finding money coming in from some some source, maybe your pay packet or or being furloughed or pensions or whatever it might be, and you're finding you've nothing to spend the money on. And the temptation might be to say, Great, I can store this up and then not have to work so hard in the future, I can take life easy. Drink and be merry. Well, God would say that's a foolish way to think about money. I think we've got to be praying that as a local community, as a parish, as neighbours, we want to be looking out for each other because there will be people at this time who are really struggling. Um, those who haven't got access to public funds, uh, those who, who find that the, the, the cost of living and the income they're getting doesn't match. Um, so... Let's look out for each other and be praying that we'll have hearts that are not greedy, um, but generous like God. And just notice at the start of the parable that it was the ground that produced the crop, uh, not the man. Uh, our, our possessions come from God's creation. He's the one who made us. He's the one who gives us what we have. And so we should be thankful to him and be rich towards him and be rich towards uh, his his priorities uh, that there be no problem in our community problem in our local parish uh, with those who've accumulated more and stored it up and those who are our neighbours who are going without so let's pray Lord we we acknowledge that money is such an issue for all of us that greed is an issue for all of us, that, Lord, there's no one on the right side of the line when it comes to our money because it is so tempting to rely on what we have stored up or to want more, to be dissatisfied with what we have. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us all to have the right attitude towards you because you are rich you are generous. You gave us life. You give us forgiveness in your son, Jesus Christ. You gave your only son to suffer death upon the cross that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. We might not be able to take anything with us, but we can be with you in glory. And so help us, Lord, today to have that right attitude for those whose um, money is piling up because there's nothing to spend it on. We pray, Lord, for that 
generosity of spirit. But for those who are struggling, we pray, Lord, for, for an openness, a willingness to ask, for, for neighbors to help. We pray that you'd rebuild and reconnect this parish, that we'd be genuinely those who love you and love our neighbors as ourselves. Put away our love of money. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great readings today. Psalm 32, one of my favorites. I hope to have it read at my funeral. Blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven, whose iniquity is covered. Um, Jesus has covered that by his death on the cross. And that freedom to confess, freedom to say, sorry God for breaching his standards. And, and just have that challenge for our money today. Let's, let's check, our, check our hearts are right before God. And I'll see you tomorrow. Every blessing.